Power 96.1, it's Maddox in studio with the one and only James Bay. How are you, my I'm man? I'm very good. Thank you for having me. Ah, heck yeah, man. Welcome uh, to the ATL. How have you been? I've been good. I've been all right. I'm, I, I suppose I'm just excited to be back on tour at this point. But the way that 2018 went, I released my second album, Electric Light, in 2018, and it meant lots of touring. It meant being very busy, and that's great. Um, but something I hadn't done uh, in a busy kind of touring campaign before is try and make enough room to be writing and to, to get back into the studio when you're flying around the world all the time. It's and hard. the time zone changes too. The time zone changes I don't know insane. how you do it. I, I don't know how I do it. I don't know how any <laughs> of us do it. But um, we, I guess we love it enough to, to kind of get on with all these crazy time zone changes. But I, yeah, in 2018, um, by about September, I wanted to really dedicate some time to getting back in the studio, keep writing, to have more music to release. This is the world we live in now. You've got to put music out or... Everybody wants music. You know, the consumption is amazing. Like, everybody it's quick. wants music all the time. It's quick. Yep. Um, and that's cool for me. I'm enjoying, so I've been enjoying writing, and, and here we are now um, out in America for all of March. We're here um, and uh, touring around the, around the country and into Canada. And, uh, yeah, we're, I've, got this, I've got a new single. I've got more music on the way as well. That's amazing. So uh, you just kicked off this leg of the tour, right, for U.S., and then you're going to Canada? Uh, we, I think we, we kind of dip in and out of Canada along the way. Okay. The, the higher up the, the United States we get, we're going to jump into Jump into Canada, Canada jump right back? Jump back out, but, um, <laughs> which is the, uh, the way it goes, which is great. Um, it's an exciting year, though. We've got this tour, uh, and then I come off this tour in, uh, in the States, and, uh, and I go on tour for like the entire summer with Ed Sheeran. I'm opening up for Ed Sheeran around Europe. In the UK, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw well, that. Yeah, this it's, it's kind of... He's got a couple of UK shows um, that are kind of in these enormous parks, but we're doing a whole European run, so all the other stuff. But wow, really so you're going to the UK and like what, like Paris? Like we're going all- to Paris. We're going as far as Russia. We're Russia? Going to, I think we're going to Iceland. Um, I, wow. So it's, and they're all stadiums. They're all these like 80,000, 90,000 capacity like mini festivals. How did you kind of link up with Ed Sheeran? Was it just like uh, you guys are friends? Well, yeah, I guess Ed is, as everybody says, and it's it's entirely true. Like he's he's obviously this extremely nice dude, this extremely kind of open, uh, giving, um, and uh, just sort of loving guy who kind of he's passionate about music, clearly as we all are, and he is a, a huge advocate for sort of sharing the experience. Um, I I actually met him on a red carpet. That was the first time I met him. About it was either 2014 or 2015. Sometime in 2015, we'd stayed in touch, and he um, he came to my show and jumped up to play Let It Go with me, which was very cool. That's got to be like a um, really cool experience. That man. was right. Yeah, he landed from New York that morning. He was insanely jet lagged, and he came straight to the venue and just sat there throughout the afternoon, hanging out. Um, uh, and we and we sort of sound checked the song, and 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 then he got up and did it. And it was only like a thousand cap venue. It was kind of a, there was a big crush at the front. I said, "Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Sheeran," and people didn't really. They weren't. They, they, he didn't say Ed Sheeran, did he? And then Ed walked out, and then the whole f- everybody just like crushed to the front. I was, wor- I was worried for some people. Yeah, but no, there were Don't no. Don't want to get in- trampled. There were no injuries. There were no injuries. That's I good. Can tell you. But uh, and we stayed in touch. Um, Ed is, uh, yeah, he's he he's all about staying in touch. Uh, as am I, and we've stayed in touch over the years. And um, yeah, he 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 was looking for a, a new opener for this run of his his insane endless stadium tour. I feel like it's never ended. It's just gone on for like years. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> it is really uh, just such an enormous achievement. And um, yeah, what a guy. And he's he's he asked me to come out and, and open up, which is a total joy and a massive honor. That's great, man. That's really cool. And speaking about what you said, you know, about taking some time to just kind of like step back and and relax as an artist. You know, I feel like. The, the pressure is always on, you know, it's Absolutely. like music, uh, shows, yeah. tour, yeah. interviews, like it's just endless. How important do you think that balance is for somebody like, you know, yourself, you said mm. it's important to just step back and like mm. Ed Sheeran, like I, the guy feels like he yeah. never steps back from anything, but well, how, how do you make time? It all comes down to one thing, whether it's me or Ed or anybody else, how much do you love it? How much, because yes, there's pressure and yes, it's a lot of work and yes, it's, it's nonstop. It's like, if it, you know, it feels like it's more than 24 seven. Um, but if you love it, you're excited to be doing it all the time. Yeah. So you will, and you'll kind of, and if you've got to get up at 6 a.m. the next day and you kind of finally wrapped being at a show at like 1, 2 a.m. the night before, that's just part of the job. I, I, that's, that's all I can say. Like, and I, makes sense. I, I, I mean, I haven't, I have talked to people like Ed about this kind of thing. Uh, you know, I've talked to different artists about it and everybody kind of says, well, at the end of the day, as hard as it might be sometimes, I love it. And it's everything I've dreamt about doing since I was a kid. And the same applies for me. So you just go for it. You throw yourself into it. I think that kind of applies to, to like, um, 
my job too because ever since I was a kid, this is all I ever wanted to do was right. talk on the radio. And I was like eight years old, I think. Right. Just listening to the radio in the car, you know. And yeah. man, I really want to do that. Well, that's it. If you if it and you only you can recognize when you feel that actual passion for it. You yeah. Can't, you can't fully explain it to anybody else. And if they don't have it, they don't have it. And they don't they don't understand what it means right. to. To be that dedicated, you know, and to, to it's just like a feeling in your gut, you know, and it's so, just, you feel it. Yeah, and, and to you and me, we enjoy our jobs. There can't necessarily be a bad day at work, but if there is one that isn't as good as the others, you still want to be a part of that day. Yeah, you do. Because I it's, totally it's, agree. It's, 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 it's a different version of doing the thing that you love. I totally agree with you that. Know? And when you're not doing it, like, for example, when you're taking a break or, you know, when you're writing music... And you're not doing like the you're not full into it. Yeah. Do you get the itch to like get back to it quickly? This is the thing about m what I do is is the longer you spend in the studio, the more exciting uh, what you are creating gets, and and you think and you dream more about getting it onto a stage and getting it in front of the fans. Um, and then the more you work at so it's this crazy cycle. The more you work at being on stage and getting this great reaction with the fans, the more you want to get back into the studio to create more to bring back to the fan. You know, it's a yeah, it's a cycle. So it's it's kind of most of the time, it's kind of a win-win. It's, it's pretty fun. That's awesome. So yeah. you kind of like get yourself excited, you know, like yeah. you're in the studio doing all this creative you know, writing and, yeah. and instrumentals. And How does that process work for you? Like, do you kind of like think, you hear like instrumentals in your head or you just kind of come up with lyrics or it, situations? For me, like writing and, and making records, it, it starts, it, it's music before lyrics most of the time. Um, often I'm feeling things that I want to talk about and write about, but um, I, I, I find out I go look for the music that kind of expresses those emotions and then I add the kind of the actual words to you know the actual descriptions of those emotions to the music okay so I let the music guide it in that respect and even dynamically um you know I, I let if, if it's a if it's a sort of extremely kind of intensely passionate or maybe even sometimes a kind of an angry feeling then you let that you you let that guide the music but the music is the actual uh tangible thing that comes first and then I'll add lyrics and all of the time to be honest it's a kind of multi-dimensional thing the whole time I'm thinking about how that will translate to the stage in the show and how um and how important it is to keep folks engaged I, I know it's like my music and my thing and and I'm kind of the boss of how it sounds but first and foremost I'm actually thinking about how the fans will react how to other it. people are going to react yeah, to it I, I want I, you know and how they can experience it the best and all of that so that's a big part of my creative process that's awesome man wow uh you know i realized something uh doing some some research on on you you is it uh, that me and beyonce share a birthday <laughs> no actually it is regarding a birthday but that's all i want to talk about your <laughs> beyonce and birthdays you uh, your uh, your birthday's the day before mine actually all oh, right you're september 4th well you me and beyonce we can have the same party it's, it'd be great we should all have we a birthday party that would, that would actually be one heck of I a party that would be a lot of fun that would be a, a we, turn up time for we'd sure have a good time hopefully she could <laughs> sing a few numbers <laughs> so what is uh, so you have the song out with uh with julia michaels now julia michaels have you met julia michaels uh, she's very nice yes she's, she was at our jingle ball one year super nice girl she's very nice and she is one of the most talented songwriters I've met and I've worked with. And I'd heard, she signed to the same label as me, we're both on Republic, and she, I'd heard all sorts of great kind of whispers on the grapevine about, about her talent. And then I, and I met her about a year before we got in the studio together. Um, and we've since, and that was the end of 2017, and we got together first at the end of 2018, um, and we've since written a handful of times. Oh, wow. Peer Pressure, the song that we've put out together, um, that was the first song we wrote together. The yeah, first that, one. That, that was the first thing that we did together. How long did it take you guys actually to kind of like complete the project and start to finish, would you uh, say? Well, it's funny because we, we wrote it um, and it was, we, we kind of put the song together, demoed it, I guess, in about a day and a half, which is, she's, she's an amazing writer. She's quite fast as well, which is wow. one of her great talents in writing. She gets really great stuff really quick. Um, and then a brilliant producer called Joel Little, who he's done all sorts of great stuff, including uh, he kind of came onto the scene making Lord's first record and her second record, I think. Okay. Wait, I might have that wrong, but definitely her first record. Okay. Um, so he's a great guy. He kind of brought um, a little bit more dynamics and drums to the record. Um, but really, uh, I guess, I don't know, like if you put all the time together that was spent working on it, it's, a, it's just a handful of days. Wow. Um, and sometimes it's really best like that to like not, overwork or overthink the process it's kind of um, like put it down and come back to it you know yeah, and we just knew i think in the writing of the song that we had 99 percent of what we wanted and it and it felt great like that so um, wow. 
And you guys are, uh, I, I didn't see the video out yet. Is, is it? It's coming. It's coming. It's okay. coming. We've when put is a little that? acoustic, we put like a live acoustic video out. I, I saw don't that. know exactly when the video's out, but it's soon. I think it's in the next few weeks or so. Okay. Uh, That's I'll awesome. You know. Heck yeah. So everybody be sure to check that out on uh, on the YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and you've got more music on the way in 2019, right? Yeah, lots man. of music? Yeah, lots of music on the way. I'm Your not face sure. just lit up when you said that. You're like, yeah, man, I got all sorts of stuff. Oh, it's very exciting, man. <laughs> it's Yeah, I, I, and I'm not sure if it's, I, I'm going to go song by song for now. I'm not sure whether that'll amount to, I suppose I've got more writing to do before I can really talk about like an album or anything. You know, it, it, going back to what you said about the consumption and mm. how fast music happens, do you feel that it's better to put like singles out now and EPs or like full albums? I think, I, I think at the moment singles, but that doesn't change. What that doesn't change for me is how important I think an album is and how important an album is to at least my fans, sure. if, not, if not many more people. I think it's still a very important thing to more people. And I think as time goes on, it's hard to predict the future. You can't really do that. But I think there'll always be a place for the album. People will love having that that uh, catalogue of songs all in one go. But right now, it does seem that song by song is how people want to receive stuff. And that's okay. Like that's, that's, yeah, totally. that, that's exciting for everybody, I think. Um, there's just so much new music every day at the moment. It's crazy. Uh, with kind of streaming platforms and stuff. <laughs> and it's, it's a pretty wild, kind of Wild West sort of thing to navigate. But... Um, I guess we're all just out here to try and keep being a part of this industry and, and keep it alive. Um, at the moment, we're going song by song. And, and like I say, I think there'll always be a place for an album. I'm, I'm going to be making albums way into the future of my career. That's awesome. Um, and if right now it's, like I say, if right now it's, it's people just want to receive uh, a song at a time, then I'm trying to write all the time as well as tour all the time so I can have stuff to, to give the fans. That's great. Man, I, I wish you a, a heck of heck of a lot of success in Thank the future and a you. great tour. And oh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, what new music you drop for the year, man. I'm excited. For you and to you'll hear. be at Coca Cola Roxy tonight. Yes, indeed. Love it. Well, good luck on the tour. And again, man, thank you so much for for stopping by Thanks, and hanging man. out with us. Thank you, man.